Oh, start of a like tight never wants to jump in first if you can help it. Like he kind of just wants someone to bait for him a little bit. You get two three ravage, and you feel it feels way better than if you have to bring him first. They do pick up that, that void. Okay. Okay, so they do go for that. Okay, yeah. Um, I still like it more now, though in in general for Tundra than last game because now it's also they can kind of play their game a bit more this game I think. Yeah. They have this mass AOE team fight that remain. and and. Spirit kind of has to come to them, because Void, Five seconds I think Void remaining. pretty much trumps everything late game. How about Spirit just puts the Lina forward together with Mars, very strong lane, and pick Tinker? <laughs> I mean, sure, just go for the full debate. Like, Tinker looks so good this game. Yeah, it does, it does, you're right. Phoenix, all right, I mean, Phoenix another classic. Really yeah, against Io, though, can be scary. Why, because overcharged, it can yeah. be or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even the Gyro and Io, both support could just kill the egg by themselves. Yeah, but there's a Mars and like... Yeah, it's, it's not easy, it's just Luna. if you ever get on top of it, it's just gone. Mm -hmm. Fried egg. <laughs> fried egg. Yeah, well, I like fried egg. But this is a nice save for the Chrono, right? Like, a Sunray, like, it's actually legit, right? And yeah. then you have the Sunray against Tidehunter is really strong. You reckon it's gonna go lock it, or no? Yeah, the mm. Phoenix. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Kid world, it could also be like... I don't know what people buy on Phoenix. Kid it's world, like kind of outplayed right now. <laughs> yeah, I maybe think Lockett was very maybe he has a new, uh, Maybe he has some XD. new idea of what to do. But Lockett could be a play. Like some yeah. Yules. Fast yeah, Refresher Yules. is also good, I think. Halberd even against the Void, maybe. Could be good. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So to summarize, Black, do you like this Tundra Draft a lot more? Are you feeling more positive about their chances in this game, too? I like it way better than the first one. Mm. Whether I think it's better than Spirit's Draft, though, probably not. Like it looks really good, but like Spirit just have like this really strong team fight combination, and they're really reliant on a very good Chronosphere. I feel like a really good Chrono or Ravage, and it's just not very easy to set up against the heroes that uh, Spirit have. Okay, if uh, Tundra are reliant on a Chrono, uh, what are Spirit reliant on Misery? What can we expect them to see if they're going to win this game? I mean, just the normal Spirit stuff, right? Like Toronto, Tokyo getting really fat, Lu Tor Yatoro getting really fat, and like just like I don't know, just good play. Like just the last that. game, you know, it's going to be hard. like once again, the Tundra doesn't have a really easy way to start a fight, and Spirit are just going to like use that to their advantage, I think, and just not give Tundra any way of, of taking a good fight. So I think they're going to get out farmed again, like, because they won't be able to catch Spirit, but Spirit will be able to catch Tundra. So, <laughs> Okay, well, can Tundra catch Spirit up in this game too and bring the series to a 1-1, one, one, or will Spirit run away from it? We're going to hand over to Nomad and Lizard to find out. Thank you very much, Dan and the gang. Yep, that's right. The new freshest duo. You know, we've got it all, don't we, Lizard? You know, we've got the brains. That's you. We've got the strength. Also you. We've got the good looks. Also, also you, actually. Let's just get on with the game. Um, game number two. Do Tundra stand a better chance than game number one, Lizard? Um, yeah, I think so. I think the draft is pretty neat. I liked what uh, the panel was talking about. I liked the fact that they mentioned the overcharge versus the Phoenix seg. It's not even only the overcharge, right? Like it's it's much harder to play the Phoenix when there's there could be extra two heroes on top of your egg at any given time that yeah. are just hitting, right? The relocate allows you to have that. That's why you hate playing um, the egg versus anything literally that can get on top of it easily like a mirana if you remember leap on has extra attack speed suddenly you're scrambled um but you do have the mars pr to protect you and you do have the mars to protect the lena as well overall team spirit's draft looks very well rounded yeah both teams actually i'd say coming with uh, similarly well rounded drafts they've got a bit of everything and uh, pretty normal across the board, actually. You know, we talked a lot about creativity, but, you know, part of having a good amount of creativity Gyro. in your team... Oh, hello here. He's gotten nightmared up for the time being. Is there anyone else here? Do they need anyone else? I think they'll just they be don't. able to get this kill regardless. Well, they're playing with him even a little bit. I feel like Mposhka could have given it another hit there, but, uh, yeah, it didn't happen. You see what Mposhka did with that sentry. Not only did he block the heart camp, 
he realized that Fata likes to plant this ward. There's a ward behind the tree that he likes to plant right there. He ate the tree even to try and find it. Sadly for him, didn't happen this time. That sneaky badger stun out in the bottom lane as uh, things get started. But yeah, as I was saying before, you know, creativity, it comes with a caveat that you have to know when to be creative and when actually just like these tried and tested drafts are going to serve you just as well as something a little bit off the wall. And I think when two teams are equally as creative as other, then we are going to see some more normal drafts because they're going to know that they're ready for anything coming their way. Um, but yeah, I really like this uh, top lane of uh, 33 and Snaking. You know, I know it's not going to be like the uh, Slardar lane or something like that where you're really making a great use of the overcharge, but actually just giving this uh, Tidehunter a battery just to constantly be in the faces of Mira and Yatora should should be pretty strong. Right? Oh yeah, sure. I, I feel like even Tide, don't underestimate his uh, right click potential with the Wisp. Like, you can dive heroes. With that Gush, you know, minus armor, overcharge, you get close enough to hit that anchor smash, connect it to all of the heroes too. It's a dangerous lane, and Phoenix, he never truly was considered the best uh, laning support. Like, later on is where he truly shines, so the lane can be problematic. But then again, this is a long tandem, and I'm sorry, but then again, Luna is considered quite neat versus Tide Hunter, isn't she? She is, yeah. She's got that uh, magic damage to make up for it. If she gets anchor smashed, and generally is very fast to stay away from him. There, there's a lot going on in this lane uh, between these these matchups. And yeah, definitely a game where Phoenix, you know, you mentioned before the egg, not really as important. There are a lot of ways to kill off the egg this game. It is much more about that sun ray. Um, hey, I, think, that, I uh, didn't say that. Don't put things in my... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Misery said that. Misery yeah, said Misery that. said it, but he's right, like, the Sunray is really strong here, uh, utilizing it in that Chronosphere. It's, uh, it can come in handy, but that's later on, right? Like, you don't even skill it yeah. up this early on. Yeah, definitely not. So... So, well, I, I, do you think the Tundra have um, replied to the Collapse Mars well in this game? XD. Well, uh, if you think about it, Void can get out of the arena if he's not uh, if he's not completely like speared to it and controlled, which is nice. Overall, you have some save coming from the Nile, but I don't think they they I don't think that they've really answered him that hard. I don't feel like okay. he can answer collapse uh, that much. He just plays the hero really, really well. Yeah, there's a few of these players, you know, Amara as well, also another one where they will just first phase the mask because they know that they just feel like they can't be beaten, but uh, Nightmare out into the spear, this gyrocopter can't do anything, all he can do is get up a rocket barrage as he will go down in the bottom lane, second kill coming in for Team Spirit onto the gyrocopter. Yeah, one kill, one assist, um, both of them on the bottom lane, and both of those kills have been on the gyro, mid lane, Toronto, Tokyo. Yeah, this is interesting. Not quite sure what they're hoping to achieve here, but I mean, there's a decent Blimbe. amount of damage coming out. <laughs> Thank you, Lizzie. <Lizzie>. <laughs> I think uh, that's what they're trying. I'm not sure. Maybe they just want a friend and they're chasing him around, but... Uh, <laughs> it, it, there's definitely potential. You, If you think about it, there is this IO that can uh, protect Lash and give him enough uh, region and resources to dive a lean under the tower. So uh, For sure. Unfortunately for him, he did not secure the rune, he took it away from the Lash, and Lina took the bottom rune, so Lash is kind of struggling at the moment. He can't really uh, have the easiest time on the lane anymore. Also the fact that uh, Overcharge increases spell damage, right? And that's going to yep. be really good for a Lash, right? It's amazing. Just diving with, with it, it's, it feels really, really nice. I feel like Kayo, um, there's just so many ways to play it right now. If you check out different supports, different players, they all build them differently, even. Uh, bottom lane, true, true. Fata Ooh, again. Fata, fall in again. 0 and 3 is the scoreline, and that is also, unfortunately, Fata's KD right now. And that deny on the creep in the end as well. Poor Skitter is just left alone. He's trying to block these creeps right he doesn't have a lot of region so he can't really poke his head out as well it's a really really rough lane for him i mean at, at least it's not skitter getting uh constantly killed by this uh, terrifying bottom lane is, is that something we can say i feel like uh yeah we can say that at the same time i feel like fata um 
it's just a completely different beast when he has a decent time on this gyro. You know, when you start the game on this gyro position 5, and then you get to an urn fast enough, or any single item, you get some levels, you can do so much more on the map. But if you True. don't, you, you just never become a threat. You know what I mean? Like, you, you need this oomph, you need this... Um, kickstart from the laning stage to actually be a nuisance afterwards. And Jarrah's not a weak laner either, it's just that Mars Bane is just ridiculously strong. It's such a good lane. They, they just read the lanes really well and uh, swap things around. Not Once again, snaking in nine, going for the play on Toronto Tokyo. Toronto Tokyo just bailing straight up as uh, she will not stick around and face the wrath of the uh, Leshrac. However, Maposhka comes in, steals the rune. Fadas on top, though. This might spell trouble for Maposhka here, maybe biting off a bit more than he can chew. At least get the bounty. At least get the bounty. He's not even going to get a bounty. Now he's just going to take it out from under him. A sad death for Maposhka. Oh, and a stack as well. Oh my god, Maposhka just led them into like a positive treasure trove. Yeah, he tried to deny it. He tried to deny it, it just didn't work. Uh, so, overall, it's not really worth it. He took the illusion, but he gave the bounty and the stacks. That voice line, man. <laughs> I see Quincy Crew have gone with a, uh, a very bold strategy of just yelling down the microphone. What's it really works. nice that uh, Team Spirit is doing right now as well is setting up Mira on top lane. If you think about it, without Ravage, and maybe even with Ravage, it's unlikely that 33 kills him. Uh, so, he can get all the experience on top, meanwhile Luna is getting... Well, actually, ooh, I take that back. He's getting really close to dying here. Uh, no one else coming in though to help out with this kill, so 33, I mean he's just going to continue to dominate this lane. Really good start for 33 on the Tidehunter. Yeah, he was actually tanking the tower a little bit as well, so the Carty dishes out more damage on it, but in the end he needed to, you know, just run away. He was taking too much damage. Catapult dies and now Mira is back again. Try to be as annoying as possible, trying to do anything he can to stop his tide just getting everything at once. But similar thing happening at bottom, to be fair. Collapse is also having a pretty free time. In fact, might even be getting a kill as well here, as they have the nightmare set up on to the gyrocopter. We've seen it three times already, and now we see it at four. No, I completely understand what they're doing. It's symmetrical, right? On top lane Phoenix and on the bottom lane Gyro. But I wasn't sure about this IOTP. However, it seems all right. I wonder if Snaking actually understood that they will try and pull that. He actually understood that they will try and pull that small camp. He might die though. Yeah. Once again, I mean, how many times are we going to see this combo work so well? Well, actually, they're coming for a bit of revenge here, Tundra. They're looking for Maposhka. And they might well just find him. There's a lovely bash coming through from Skidder. Oh, no. And that will get them the kill onto the Posh game. The Chrono's there to get the kill onto the Mars as well. All right, fair enough. Yep, drop it down, cancel the TP. Let's see, can he toggle his way out of this one? He's got an arena as well, but I just don't think... Oh, he's turning it around to the Void. Collapse, toggling through. Skidder getting away. And Fada trying to chase down this Mars. I'm not sure Mars is actually going to make it out in the end. No toggles today, sir. Collapse is gone. It was looking a little bit spicy for a minute there. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, 33 under the tower. Mira's got the Sunray coming out onto him. That percentage face damage is going to rip through the Tide Hunter along with your Toro to get your Toro a kill and keep that tower alive. It is very healthy, this top tower, actually. Yeah, the top tower is uh, very healthy. The bottom one as well. It's some peculiar moves. Like, both of these teams, usually they are very objective-based. They take down that tier one and they proceed from that. Like, they continue making the right moves. But on both sides, they kind of went too far. On top lane, 33 seems like he's been taunted by the Phoenix. And on the bottom lane, Mars, instead of taking uh, the tower, he goes for the kills on Io and um, Gyro, which results in him Excellent. dying in the end. So, Indeed. Uh, yeah, peculiar plays. Like, overall, not as disciplined as you'd expect from them. Mira, I mean, uh, Nine's down here. It's, it's, he's, he's looking to at least take the tower, I think. Won't be getting the kill onto the Phoenix, I don't believe. Radiant are scanning. Radiant's middle tower. Mid lane as well though. Yeah, Team Spirit are putting on the pressure onto the middle tier one at the same time. So symmetrical moves happening across the map. 
as uh, Team Spirit move in their Lunar as well, utilizing that aura to take down that tower, and it's a tier one. Team on. coming in. They want to help out, but Fata's already gone, and well, they find the Tide Hunter, but they don't really TP him into the best place. They'll kill off Toronto Tokyo, but I don't think they're getting anything more from this. Snake King, does he bring anyone back with him? Oh, going back alone into two heroes. This could get very messy very quickly. It is both the supports, but I'm not sure. Do they have enough to kill off Snake King? I think so. He has six and one, though, and the raindrop, but I still think he dies. Yeah. Pops the wand. Got the fairy fire next. Pops Maybe that. Maybe he doesn't. Oh, the other away is taking. He's not going to burn out. He's fine. My goodness. They, they had grip there. They just didn't want to use it. They also had sleep that they could have used to oi, hit him. Oi, oi. Nine. Taking a lot of damage inside this arena. Can't survive here. Big kill from Team Spirit in the bottom side. I'm not sure how they caught Nine out there. I think but, he... Uh, the last track is gone. Yeah, he was running down with haste, I believe. He picked it up. He, may, he might... Might have been a little bit too aggressive trying to get the kill. They catch him. Denied. Yeah, just uh, interesting plays from both teams. Uh, like I said before, a little bit uh, undisciplined, you could call it perhaps that way. But one thing the Team Spirit does really well is uh, when a team t is taking their Tier 1 top, it seems like they really like to pressure the Tier 1 mid at the same time with the carry and the position too, right? Like they yeah. did it a couple of times now that I've been watching them. Post TI, I mean. Yeah. That was looking very good for Team Spirit. On the left side of your screen there, the Luna, the Mars, the Lena, all above their counterparts. Not lane. having the gold on Tundra right now. Chronosphere coming down to the bottom lane. It's a good one from Skidder. They've got the follow-up damage. They do indeed as Nine gets relocated in. They want to take down the Mars and Collapse will go down. They get themselves something on Tundra. However, is... where are they relocating back to? To Luna. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's an Eclipse 9. He doesn't want to be here. Can he get himself out? The LSA is down and Toronto Tokyo is going to take down the Leshrac. Team Spirit set up for the relocate gank, but the Ravage is in. Can they kill the Luna? That's a great kill if they can get it, then they can. Your Toro is gone. Meanwhile, the Luna is able to get herself back and away, but the Luna not quite so lucky. Yeah, still though, that's a really nice kill that they got. They did lose the Leshrac, but killing off the Luna, preventing her from ramping up that... Uh farming speed is really important so a really nice kill they did use what ravage and relocate so it's it's solid i'm just waiting for team spirit to make the first move so far they've been making these one two connections but not necessarily a full team fight uh the egg plus the mars arena is really what we're waiting for yeah that is the combo isn't it I'm just thinking, like, what's the what's the goal time for them? Is it the Lina BKB, or do they just go into the pit like they're doing right now? Liz, I, th I think they're going to go into the pit like they're doing right now. Yep. <laughs> Amazing call, Nomad. I, you know, thank you, like, thank you. <laughs> Phoenix is probably one of the best heroes to have around the pit. And then, if you don't have any ways of initiating, like your Mars went for an armlet instead of a blink, you can force them to come to you if they want to, obviously instead of chasing them around so a free rush for them yep fantastically done by team spirit great read and that's going to get toronto tokyo and ages of immortality on his lena which is scary enough as is and now also being immortal nine's got to be careful this is not an area they really want to be hanging out with snaking went for the stack and does get away with it it's just no initiating tools it's hard for them. Like if when you look at these heroes, it's literally only the Mars that can uh, initiate. And uh, he, I believe, has a blink dagger flying to him. Okay. After that, a team fight is possible. Yeah. Yep. This is their timing. They have an Aegis. They have an armlet blink Mars. Anything a little Dota player could want. They now have Tundra. I don't know how they're going to fight into this. I imagine it's just going to be split the waves, try and avoid them, try and wait for another Chronosphere timing and Ravage. Maybe that's the way you can swing a team fight, but so hard. It, it is difficult, but if you look at their team fight, it's not really that shabby as well. You, oh, you no. have this cooldown with the Ravage, with the Chronosphere follow up afterwards, Lash dealing a lot of damage without actually having to do a lot. So feel like they definitely have the way of fighting back and that's why they smoke. 
so easy to smoke like this when you have IO. Like, you just show top, you continue split pushing and then relocate back into the fight. And again, this is Team Spirit playing unpressured, untilted, just relaxing. You know, they're like, ah, you know what, they've got these big ultimates. Maybe we can fight them, maybe we can't. Well, actually, she's starting in the bottom lane right now. It's collapse already very low to start off this fight. And now they'll TP in the less track, but wait, the blink away from collapse? Wow. No idea where he got that off, but gets himself away. And that's going to be no kill for Tundra by the looks of it. He's still very low and he's still around. He's got the armlet though, and he's ready to drop the arena if he sees an opportunity. Gyro. Yeah, that's going to be a freebie, although the yeah, spear's still in vision. No worries at all. They'll kill off Fatter again. Well. There's a void on the bottom lane. He's setting up perhaps for a chronosphere. I wonder if they'll uh, take the bait. You can see Toronto Tokyo, he's actually going through the trees, checking the flanks, making sure that no one gets him from that side. And they go. I mean, if they use Chrono, it's only for the ages. <laughs> yeah, Skitter, it was actually mid-animation there, but cancelled it. I'm not sure he was trying to bait a response or what, but yeah, that was never gonna, never gonna work well for them. Time oh, <laughs> he was about to ravage there. I mean, doesn't this kind of show like how indecisive Tundra are being though? They're like kind of cancelling it. Everyone's kind of not so sure, but still looks good as they do take down the Bane, clear out their jungle and kind of reclaim this part of the map for themselves. They and smoke up instantly. This yeah, nice. so that's decisive. Mars perhaps collapse as a blink. Yeah, he saw them. Got a low ground. Oh, the Lina, this could be a good kill, but don't forget, she has the Aegis. They don't want to drop any ultimates on her. 33, he could be in a good place to do it, but with the BKB coming out from the Luna, they'll just shred apart. Poor old 33. Fatter running away on the back lines, but they're more looking towards 9. I think 9's going to be okay, and it's just going to be a gyrocopter going down as well. So, the moment they get off that BKB on the Luna, you can't ravage anymore, and it just looks a little bit awkward for poor old Tundra again. Yeah, they run uphill, uh, they run into an area where they have wards, but it still doesn't matter um, because of the quick fingers from the Luna, from that BKB. I, I think they wanted to kill off Lina first, obviously that's who they initiated on, but she has an Aegis. What's the point, really? And you were talking about that undecisiveness, I feel like the better decision might have been to just chill out and wait for the Aegis to be reclaimed. Yep, perhaps. But Tundra, you know, they've, they've got these big spells, you know, I, I, I bought the Chronosphere, yeah. I want to use the Chronosphere. Well, talking of which, they found Toronto Tokyo here, that's going to be an easy first kill. Now, the rest of Team Spirit, they are nearby, but are they nearby enough? Yatoro coming in from the sidelines, 33 is ready with a Ravage, but the BKB comes out from Toronto Tokyo immediately, not letting us down to fate, and just trying to get back under the safety of the tower, but the crawl, oh my Perfect god, beautiful damage. timing there from 33, that was perfect! But now they need to get themselves back. They've got the kill on Melina. The egg is down. Get yourselves away. And now maybe Tundra can look to go again. Don't forget, there's a secondary ultimate. The Chronosphere is available. Avoid hiding in the back lines, looking for an opportunity and threatening Team Spirit. Man, I mean, I haven't seen timing like that in a while. That was beautiful from 33. Yeah, yeah. He actually used the Ravage before the BKB went, yeah. went away. So that that third wave of spikes actually... Latches on to Lina, really nicely placed. Uh, also, really nicely abused the fact that there are no ultis on Team Spirit. No Mars Arena, so they managed to kill off Lina very easily like that. Yeah, up. Great issues there. Um, hello, Collapse. Collapse realizing he's been seen due to the fact that the rockets are going upon him. Nice nightmare out from the Bane to buy him some time, but it's not going to be enough. The stun from Nine Lands, and they will kill off Collapse. Now, Chandra looking for more. Can they find it? Toronto Tokyo would be. Uh, sorry, Toro would be a great target, but unfortunately, not able to get on top of him. I think he still had a BKB charge available as well. So now, One thing that I'm noticing from Team Spirit in this game is they, that they're not really. Um, executing the farming game as hard as in in the last match like the last match they were kind of always ahead of tundra somehow they they found ways of staying ahead this game is similar they are but you ex you would perhaps expect more from a luna like the five kills are literally where it's coming from the network advantage that is i mean yeah yeah 
Well, we shall see. I mean, it's the difference between, you know, a carry with a lot of money and a carry with a IO behind it. Although, I say carry, we're talking more about Nine here being the carry of this game nice at the moment as the reader comes down. Very nicely done. Catching out both Nine and the IO. Nine, no BKB available just yet, so no way to escape the wrath of Collapse as they will get the two kills up from the top side. Yeah, so easy. They make it look so easy to make these uh, small little turnaround plays to get the arena to kill off both Io and uh, the Lash. That's also in part because of the relocate. It was on cooldown. So the Io was playing more with Lash instead of just staying somewhere behind and then tethering and relocating him away out of problems. I think sometimes we all wish we had an Io to just take us away from our problems, but alas. Don't we? Radiance top tower is under attack. So, the, at what point in the game are we going to see the Void taking the initiative and being on the front lines? Uh, never, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you have less, you have died. You don't Radiance necessarily have to. It's a right, dream. Right. It's a dream Void game in which you can uh, really be patient and choose the target at your chrono. I could. It truly doesn't matter as long as they manage to bait out the BKBs and fight afterwards. Yeah, should we be concerned that he is like 4k gold behind the Luna though? <laughs> it's concerning, but it's a Luna, right? Like, it's a hero that farms extremely fast plus has 5 kills to her name. In lane, can they catch the Kite Hunter? Very unlikely. <laughs> Top lane smoke up from Team Spirit. They're moving in towards the Roshan pit. This guy's going to respawn. Or we'll know when in about a second exactly when it's going to be back. Again. But here we go. This is the big target. The Lash Rat completely locked down. No chance of escape at all. Well done by Team Spirit. And now they look for more. Snaking's going to be the next target. They want to bring down the Io as well as the Lash Rack, And they will be able to do exactly that. 33. More. We've seen this one before last game. But this time he gets to blink away to the safety. 33 will be all right, but that is two big kills again. Nine has just lost all of his momentum in the case of about like two ganks in a row. Team Spirit have just completely shut down this Lash Rack again. Yeah, I'm not sure just how they're making it look so easy. Like, remember the first series with Navi that we watched? Navi versus, who was it again? Uh, OG. OG. Like, like, Navi, maybe they would be behind, but they would always read OG's smokes and moves and they would kind of dodge them. Team Spirit just, is just way too quick or way too unpredictable for Tundra at the moment. Like, they just lost Io and Lash like two times consecutively. Their game is. Their momentum, like you said, is extremely ruined. A stick in the spokes of their bike right now. Still, a plenty of hope left for Tundra, and they're never really out of this game. As you mentioned before, they have those ultimates. The ability to five on five from them is always going to be a scary factor for Team Spirit to deal with. And it doesn't matter how far Jaluna gets, you know, if that Chronosphere comes out and no one can help you, then you are going to die. But of course, Team Spirit not going to let that happen without a huge fight. And this Roshan's going to be up in 8 seconds time, and that means that Team Spirit, they want to tango. Team Spirit is doing the same thing again. Aiding the triangle. Literally, three times in a row they're running to the same spot, and again, 9 is up front. Yep, they want this Roshan, and the easy way to get it is to get control of this triangle. It just means that they'll have no way into the pit on the side of Tundra. Dust. And in we go, jumping in, Arena comes down, they want to catch the Io straight off the bat, and they might be able to do exactly that, but the Ravage comes in, Snaking's still alive, dying to collapse, but collapse is giving it its all. Meanwhile, Toronto took you, oh, they're going to get the Chrono off, but now the Grip comes out from a post, meaning the Void can do nothing in Toro. Is he still alive here? How? Finally goes down, caught by a Thunderbolt, but nine falls as well. Both the big calls on the side of Tundra are gone, 33 still alive, but he is one man versus the world, and that's not a fight he's going to win as Team Spirit will be able to clean him out. Five heroes for one. I'm not great at math, but that seems worth it for Team Spirit to me. Yeah, I, I think mathematically it's worth it for them. They did lose that Tuna who's on top of the network charge, but it doesn't matter. And you know what's the saddest part for Tantra? Like, they saw this one. Okay, they, they got fooled twice. This third time they weren't truly fooled because they understood what was happening. Um, Leshrak even popped the dust expecting Lina to be nearby. They knew the move is heading their way, but they still couldn't react properly and on time. Um, Chrono on the Luna was nice, but the egg was already used on the high ground, so the egg stuns the void, was also gripped, 
So, like, you get stunned by the egg and you're gripped, you're probably not going to kill anyone. They do manage to kill off Luna in the end, but the cost was way too high. Yep. Radiant. Team spirit are inevitable. You can feel them coming. You can read them all you want, but they're still going to do it. And in this game, at least, they, they're going to come out the better team in that engagement. And now an Aegis, once again, in the hands of Toronto Tokyo. This Lena is going to be unstoppable now. We know how scary that is. You know, the, the one downfall Lena has is that if you get on top of her, you can kind of bully her and take her out of her fight because she has to back away. But when she has this Aegis, she doesn't need to. She'll stand her ground and attack you right back. M Mira is level 17. This That's is insane. Yeah, this is a huge deal because once that 18 is there, Egg becomes not necessarily unkillable, but extremely difficult. It, it becomes an additional big problem that you're going to have. He's also uh, sniffing at the void here when it comes to net worth. He's, he's not that far away. Less than 2,000 gold and I think catching distance of the faceless void and net worth, which would just be bad. And talking about bad, 9 dying here would not be ideal at all for Team Tundra. BKB's out, but doesn't really make a difference. The damage from this double damage Lena is just ridiculous. And have they noticed the IO's coming back as well? Alright, that's probably going to be another kill for the Lena then. Meanwhile, Collapse just jumping into the back lines, finding Fatter, a nice little plus one, realizing that Fatter's going to be waiting for the IO to try and help him out and give him a uh, tether target. Instead, 33 will be the tether target. Looks like IO will get away. 33 is going for the secret spot. The spear catches them out. The uh, Yules is there as well. And now it's just going to be another hero gone for Tundra. But hey, they, they got the IO out, so mission complete? Uh, yeah, press X yeah. to show doubt. Um, Kai tried to TP away there from that little spot where you're kind of in the fog, unless you're standing straight on top of him. Was a nice attempt, just didn't work. And I'm not sure, like, you asked me five minutes ago if it's all right that uh, Faceless Void is behind Luna. It was okay, but his net worth didn't change in five minutes. It, it remained the same, <laughs> and that's a bigger issue. And now you're getting this BKB. It will be helpful, but still you're playing versus a uh, Bane. The grip will go through it. Yeah. That's the issue. Not just that, but the uh, supernova as well, when that comes crashing down, gonna stun you up a little bit as well. Like, it's, it's not gonna make you feel that safe. And that's all he has. Mask of Madness, Maelstrom, BKB. It's... Oof, it's a rough one. I mean, how did it get to this point, though? Because, like, it feels like this game is just going in a flash because, you know, Team Spirit are so flashy. They're making these aggressive, quick plays, but, like... How have Tundra not been able to utilize their ultimates to get a more fight or two in their favor? I feel like uh, Team Spirit found the right fights, found Io and Lesh a couple of times. Usually when you're playing heroes such as Void and Tide Hunter, you want to use your big ultis, win that fight, and then go down low, chill out a little bit, farm up until you have the cooldowns back up. But they never truly use them. Like, we remember one Lina kill with the Ravage on the bottom tier one, right? The one we praised a lot. And that's yeah. it. Besides that, it's always Team Spirit that are on the hunt, whether Tundra has their big ultis on off cooldown or not. It didn't truly matter. That's how it feels, at least. Uh, they're reading the IO strategy really well and cutting them off while they're uh, trying to split push. It also feels like they've been able to avoid the Tide Hunter in the face of Void as well, quite well. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they know that they'll outfarm them if they simply just don't interact with them, don't get Chrono, don't get Ravaged, and that seems to be the game plan for Team Spirit. And the few times where Tundra have been the ones trying to be aggressive, trying to get the entrance to the fights, like they've just been met with Toronto Tokyo, popping the BKB before the Tide can get off the Ravage, and then they just kill the Tide in time. No problems at all. Yeah, they do have BKBs now on Tundra that you mentioned. There's a BKB on Lash, there's a BKB yeah. on uh, Void. On Lash, we already saw it used. 33 as well has one. Oh, 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 oh. A little bit of oh, guy. 33 on the run. Tundra have no intentions of taking this fight by the looks of it. Skidder, I mean, he's nearby. He's like, well, I could. Oh, okay, the reload out. Fair enough. They will keep 33 safe for the time being, but uh, 9 in the sidelines, he's in trouble. Ravage is going to come down though directly onto the Luna, they're throwing everything onto Yatoro right now. The Chrono comes down on top of her as well. The Luna is dead, but 
Toronto Tokyo is still very much alive and fighting into the void. He can't man fight the Lena. The Lena is just too much of a Chad. He's going to take down Snaking, move across, just blasting away at 33. The TP is out from 33, but he is going nowhere. As it's going to be Team Spirit once again taking down four. A great play from Tundra to jump both their ultimates onto Luna, but there's another problem in this game, and that is the Lena. And unfortunately, you know, if you don't kill both these cores with these ultimates, then it's just not going to go your way. And that's exactly what happened. Happens. Toronto Tokyo is not done. Look at this. <laughs> oh my god, it? Toronto Tokyo. I don't right. think so. A snake even buying back just to help us to get her out there, just to make sure. And this is straight towards the tier 3 on the mid lane. Even without the Luna, it's just four of them, but there's no Lash, there's no Tide Hunter. Yeah. These barracks are starting to fall. It's the sorry state of affairs for uh, Tundra here. They've even found Sna uh, Skitter in the trees, but he's got the time walk to get himself back. Okay for now. Nightmare nice once again. He's so reliable. He's so reliable. Every time this rocket comes out, you know it's not going to land. Void. Void. They can't keep him alive here. He's gone. Oh my goodness. Buyback from the Void, but Nine trying to fight into them, but the right click damage from the Lena, it's no joke. And now they turn around with the Nightmare out onto the Fada just to keep him back. Collapse. He is rocketed up, so they see where the Mars is. BKB out from 33. The Luna is back, though, and she's coming into this engagement from around the side. Mirror as well. Backing her up. They're looking for the stun out onto Fata, and Fata is probably just going to get melted away by the Sun Ray. And Fata is gone for 45 seconds. Has got buyback available should he need it. They look over towards Skinner. Skinner forced to pop the BKB. Now looking to fight up into somebody here, but who? There's no one you can kill Skinner. He has to back himself away. Oh my goodness. I mean, Team Spirit, they're just holding such a clean line here, losing nobody on the retreat and then the subsequent re engage. And I think they might just wait for Roshan to finish up this game. Uh, they're just playing so well. They're holding the line so well. Even without the Luna, it was pretty much all Lina that dish out the damage, that took the tier 3s, that took the last set uh, of those middle Raxes. And it's Mipochka as well, right? This Bane, all reliable, how you called him. Like, every single spell that he can uh, dodge with Nightmare, he dodges. It doesn't matter. His teammates know that, and it's so easy to re-engage. You don't really see Alina as ballsy as uh, Toronto Tokyo's. Like, it's because he knows he has this Bane that will save him and uh, free ticket out of jail. Yep. Now with the Satanic, the things are a little bit easier, I would even say, for Toronto Tokyo. Even if you do drop him low enough, he can BKB Satanic heal up completely. Ooh, some, some high fives. Careful. Careful, I was like, I want to high five you, but I also don't want to die trying to do it. Don't think that is a, a worthwhile trade. Well, that's very rude. You don't high five me, I throw a rocket at you. It was a nice little uh, bait, right, with him. Yeah. It's, uh, him just standing in front of the tier two and hoping that if they do go on him, then you can follow up with Ravage and Chrono and whatnot, but... Uh, in spirit are way too good for that. Stun onto the uh, Tide Hunter doesn't really mean much. I mean, this is just collapse, basically just holding heroes in the top lane, making them feel like there's a whole team about to jump them. And that's not the case. Like, Luna is literally farming in the triangle, right? Like, <laughs> the heroes aren't here. Luna is farming in the jungle. Like, they're just pretending that they're like, oh yeah, we're going for this top lane push. No, not. Uh, that's true, but remember that Lina has travels. So yeah, it's very easy for her to join a fight. And Luna is just waiting for Rosh, who has respawned. And Fata may be getting down here. Yeah. Again, Team Spirit kind of showing their hand, showing that there's not actually backup here for the Mars. And now Tundra realize that they'll, they'll take back of their triangle and they go, oh wait, um, yeah, they've just been farming this whole time. Radiance middle tower is under attack. And it's, like, it's all about vision, right? It's a nice play nice course. game that they're playing because as long as you're not showing on the Lina and the Luna, they can't really initiate on the Mars. So while Absolutely. Mars is forgetting the cheese... Okay, never mind, he took it. This guy's a TI winner, because they don't forget their cheese. Uh-huh, yeah, we definitely didn't see that at TI. <laughs> not at all. Didn't happen multiple times, no, no. Tundra, it's going to be high ground game. Man, this guy hates Fata! 
Oh, in comes Snaking, trying to save the Gyrocopter, but it won't be enough. Skidder jumping in. It's a nice Chronosphere, but does it really matter, especially with the grip coming out from the Poshka? The Ravage will connect onto him, but there's an Aeon Disc even on Toronto. Tokyo, Toronto, Tokyo is so tanky. Now the Eclipse coming down as well. They're trying to find something. They're trying to find anything. Tundra scrounging for a kill, a support, anything, but there is nothing going their way. A thousand buybacks could be used. Two thousand buybacks could be used. It doesn't matter. Team Spirit, take them down, and that'll be GG.